Hello, it's me, Leslie, and I'm here at home, and it's St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, 2020, late at night, and I'm wearing a little green, so you couldn't pinch me if you saw me, but um, I celebrate this holiday because I believe St. Patrick was a man of God. He was also a man of God who left his homeland, even after he escaped from slavery and went back home to England, he left his homeland to go back to Ireland because he felt the Lord telling him, go back to, to preach the gospel in Ireland amongst a pagan land. And he did so. And I was thinking about how St. Patrick, when the pagan customs would go on in Ireland, how he would come against them. He wouldn't like come and try to stop them from doing what they were doing. He'd just do something bigger. Oh, I just felt the Holy Ghost because that came out of nowhere except from God. I didn't think of that or have it planned. St. Patrick we went to the Hill of Slain in Ireland when we were there. St. Patrick knew that the pagan kings, the high kings of Ireland, would light uh, certain fires right around uh, the time of what we call Easter, Resurrection Day. And, but they weren't celebrating that. They were lighting their pagan fires. And instead of going to stop them from doing that, he went to another hill that could be seen from where they were lighting their fires, and he lit what was called the Paschal Fire, the Passover Fire. He lit the fire there, and, and it was a big, almost a duel of fires there, but his was the one that was seen, and his is the one that, that won out over the bonfire, as we call it, that the pagan kings were holding. And what I keep thinking is this coronavirus that's causing, wreaking such havoc among the world with panic and such and conspiracy theories, Goodness gracious, I've heard it all by now. It's wreaking such havoc, but God is higher than this. My video told you last night. If you go back and watch last night's video, by his stripes we are healed. He took dominion. Jesus came. For this purpose was the Son of Man manifested to destroy the works of the devil, including Corona. Now tonight, I went down to the well, our church in Walnut Cove, to drop off my little boy so we could go see his daddy tonight. So I dropped him off. And people were there. I said, oh, I got to go in. It was just, you know, my three daughters and then another young man there. And I thought, I got to go in. Well, you know, we started praying. Don't worry. We only had five of us there. If you want to go by the, you know, what the rules are saying. And I'm saying, you know, be smart. Wash your hands. Don't touch anybody that's sick or, you know, unless you're going to pray for them, lay hands on them. That's a different thing. But, you know, there were only five of us. And we all sort of went to our each corner of the room just to worship. And at one point, it, it was it was truly, I think, one of the most anointed nights I've ever felt at the well. It's like the power of God was so there. and People were so uninhibited, leaping, praising God. And the whole thing that I could feel all of a sudden was no weapon that's formed against us is going to prosper. And this coronavirus is 100% a weapon sent from the enemy. Now, I've been hearing conspiracy theories. The government did it, and the government's trying to do this, and China's trying to do this. What I'm telling you is, no matter the source, this is of the devil. This is a demonic infestation, and it's even coming against um, the church. When the Bible says clearly that in the last days there'll be wars and rumors of war, earthquakes in diverse places. There will be pestilence. But what does the Bible also tell us? It says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, even more so as you see this day approaching, um, even amidst the pestilence. Now, I'm going to obey the rules. I believe, you know, that we do render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, as Jesus said, unless we hear from God differently. Right now, we've not heard not to gather at the well, so we have still been gathering. Uh, normally in very small groups. But when we were there tonight in that small group, we were feeling strongly the power of God over coronavirus. And a song started playing. It's an oldie goldie song. I don't remember. Clint Brown or somebody sang it. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that we win. I win is what it says, but we were all together like, we win. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that we win. We win over this thing, but we have to stand in faith. If we're standing in fear, oh, I plead the blood of Jesus, that's not going to get you anywhere because you don't use things like the blood of Jesus in total fear. Oh, no, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No, people of God stand up in faith and say, I plead the blood of Jesus over my house and over my life. That coronavirus is not allowed to wreak havoc in my home. And then you go to the Word. I'm going to read you Isaiah 54, 17 that I've been quoting. This is God talking through the prophet Isaiah, hallelujah, to his people. So I'm talking to you. No weapon 
that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Oh, God. I'm going to just read what's pertinent right now with the coronavirus. No weapon. Coronavirus is a weapon that's been formed against the world by the enemy. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Now, if you don't know Jesus, you can't claim that promise. You cannot. If you know God, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. So I beg you tonight, if you don't know the Lord, this is the time to come to him. Not because of fear, but because he is the mighty God who has power and dominion over all of this, and he's worthy to be praised and served and followed. So I urge you, if you don't know him, come to him tonight. If you do know him already, then praise him and claim this verse for yourself. I dare you to speak it out loud before you go to bed tonight or over your children in the morning or your husband or your wife before they go off to work. You look at them and say, no weapon. You say, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Not coronavirus nor any other weapon. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, which includes you and I noticed tonight, to close out here, as we were praising God and just the Holy Ghost moving in the room, there was such joy. I felt a total difference from what I feel out in the world with the panic and the fear, really. The Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, the end of this says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. So I encourage you, people of God, worship Him, praise Him. You parents who've got your kids at home and you're like, what do I do, what do I do? In the morning, put you on some praise music, find you some good thumping praise music, and you just start praising the Lord. Get your family praising the Lord because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we have the joy of the Lord because we know that no weapon formed against us is going to, oh God, is going to prosper. So I praise Him tonight. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And we are starting, uh, America and the globe is starting a three-day Esther fast tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. This wasn't my idea. I wish I had thought of it, but I didn't. It came from a, a wonderful intercessor named Lou Engel starting it tomorrow, three days. Fast whatever you can. A lot of people are going to try to do without food, but are going to drink water. But maybe you can just fast other things if you can't fast food. And the whole purpose of this is to declare we are free of coronavirus and command it to be gone in Jesus' name. So we are going to gather at the well, and we'll keep our distance, and don't feel like you have to come if you don't want to be around anybody. But we're going to gather for the next three nights just to command that coronavirus isn't coming to Walnut Cove. So I love you. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you maybe tomorrow night.